125 miles per hour. That's the speed record that AD Horrocks is trying to smash here today. Now in the grand scheme of speed, that might not sound like a lot, but on 10 inch wheels, that's fast, very fast. We're here today at Elvington Airfield for the Straight Liners Speed Week. Forget the world's fastest Indian, this is the world's fastest Vespa. In this video, we'll be meeting AD. We'll be taking a look around the machine that he hopes will rocket him into the record books. And of course, we'll be joining him for the ride of a lifetime. So a few weeks ago on the channel, we featured a crazy man and a crazy scooter. Today, we've got another crazy man and another crazy scooter. This is AD Horrocks, and he is a proud owner of this Vespa, what we're calling the world's fastest Vespa. AD, tell us about the connection that we've got and how we've ended up here with you today via that first video we did with Jed a few weeks ago. A good friend of mine, Dan Ashman from Dan Ashman Scooters, he's very good friends with Jed. Yeah. I also know Jed just by a few um, Facebook messages and he follows me what I'm doing and stuff like that. We've got a military connection because I was in the army and he was in the Royal Marines, so there's obviously a little bit of banter there yeah. as well. After we all seen Jed's video with you guys, uh, Dan said, I know, why don't we contact you? And, yeah. uh, and now we're here. Yeah, so we're here at Elwinton for Straight Liner Speed Week, is that what this event is called? Yeah, they're calling it Straight Liner Speed Week. It's a week of uh, world records for the UK Time Association. And what is officially the record that you're trying to beat or get okay, here Okay, so week? I'm trying to beat um, my UK record of 121 miles an hour at the mile and 122 miles an hour at the mile and a quarter. So you're trying to beat your, your own record, you're trying to beat yourself? That's correct, yeah, because the record I've set is, um, like they're running all week, is two run averages. So you do two runs within an hour in the same direction. So you've either got headwind or you've got a tailwind or a crosswind. And then the average of that is, is the speed that you'll get on your certificate if you break a record. The class, the discipline is 250cc. Yeah, 250cc gear scooter. I'm 244cc, but obviously it's close yeah, enough. Yeah. So that's what I'm in. So it's time for the first run of the day then for AD. He's heading up to the end of the runway here at Elvington and is getting geared up and ready to go. So he's off, AD has hit the runway for the first time today, it's a nice steady start here on the Vespa, building up speed steadily and safely, he's just getting adjusted everything right, as you can see it's a big a long runway for such a little scooter, just a tiny little dot there on screen from the drone. But as he hits the runway proper now, hits the tarmac, he'll start to build up speed and ramp things up. He's into a tuck position. Oh, well, it looks like we had a bit of a speed wobble there as we hit about 70 miles per hour. Oh, and another a violent speed wobble there. That was obviously scary enough for AD to actually make an adjustment, but he's back into a tuck position, back on the gas and starting to build up speed again. 80, 85, 88, 89, 90, over 90 miles an hour now, really starting to pick up the pace as we're well past the halfway mark of the run now. AD's probably tucked in, heading towards the finish line, 100, 101 miles per hour across the line. Not a bad start to the day. Okay, so the first run uh, was a bit of a sighting run. We haven't run, it, run the bike in since September last year. So it was always gonna be a testing run, but the front end started going a bit light um, and the steering damper was down low. Uh, so I realized that the weight we had on before probably needed to go back on. I adjusted the steering damper mid run and then that seemed to like steady it down a little bit. Uh, so then we came back to the pits to do the rest of the adjustments for the second run. The power is, is, is really quite large um, for such something that's so light and the front end lifts um, in every gear um, unless I have some weight on. But if we don't try these things, then we don't know if, how far it'll go. It was lifting in fourth gear, so we came back to put the weights on. Uh, the weights 
on uh, nearly nine kilograms that I put on the front, so it's quite a hefty lot of weight for um, you know to try and keep that front end down. So just tell us about the bike then. What is it? What have you done to it? What are the modifications? How is this possible on a Vespa? How is it possible to go north 120 miles an hour on a 10-inch wheeled Vespa? Well, first of all, you need to um, decide that you want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Then you have to find someone who could help you do that, a manufacturer, a, you know, a certain um, tuning company or something like that. And um, do you know what? I can't even remember how I got uh, introduced to Eugenio from FRT, but I think he just seen a post of me saying, like, I'm going to build the fastest Vespa. He just WhatsApped me. And I said, can you do it? And he said, how fast do you want to go? I said, 120 miles an hour. He said, I'll get back to you. He spent three weeks getting back to me. He, he conversed with another Italian company called BFA. BFA said, yeah, I think we can do it. Pretty much with off the shelf parts, you know, we just had to put them together in the right order, you know, with the right gear ratios and stuff like that. And then they came out saying, yeah, we can do it. Shall we do it? Because I asked the question, I just said, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so the bike, it's a standard Vespa frame and chassis? It started off a standard Vespa chassis. Um, we've cut the back end off and put a fiberglass um, bubble on there. It, it was an ex-sprint bike, so it was all about saving weight then. We've repurposed it into a top speed, so we're just adding the weight back on. Yeah. The Italians, Alessandro and Fabio from BFA had that bike. I was gonna build a frame for the, just the engine, and then they sent me a picture of that bike and said, well, this is already rigged up for liquid cooled. It makes sense. So we talked about that, and then that's what happened. And the, the motor, what is that? That's a BFA 244cc uh, liquid cooled case inducted remade Vespa engine. Yeah. To give it as context, then, what would a normal Vespa be putting out on the dyno? And what does this put out on the dyno? That particular model, a 50 Special, I think it's three ho brake horsepower. Ooh. I think either 28 or 30 miles an hour is what, what they're kind of classed off. And mine is uh, 55 brake horsepower with 25 pounds torque. And the power, it comes in about like eight and a half thousand RPM and then just lights up yeah. until around 12 and a half this one. Yeah, it, it just comes in very aggressively. Yeah, <laughs> so just tell us, um, AD, how do you change gear on this bike? Obviously some scooters are different. How have you got it set up? Okay, so um, the, the left-hand hand grip is my, is my gear selector. Yeah, up so it's not down in, in... No, right, no, no foot controls. It's all, it's all on the hands. The clutch is on the left-hand side. You pull, obviously pull clutch in, move it up for first gear, then um, you know, clutch in second gear, third gear, fourth gear, going down. We've adjusted mine slightly, um, putting them up a bit further up, just so my elbow doesn't come out too far. Just trying to, again, learn, learning from last time. It was really out like this. So first gear, watch my elbow, right? First gear is here, elbow in. Second gear, third gear, fourth gear, elbow out. You know, we've got all this, so you, you, you this. So I've adjusted my first gear here, so it's one, two, three, so it's not, not as far out. That's what I learned from last time. And covering the clutch like that, trying to do that, you know, it doesn't bend. I, I literally was in pain. Tell us about the weights. We mentioned it earlier, but just tell us what happens when you don't have those on at the front here, the weights. So last time we had, we had the, um, the sort of nine kilograms um, weight rack there if you like we had that this time i decided to take it off on the first run it was lifted in third it lifted in fourth my steering damper was a little bit softer you know i had a little bit of twitch so i just had to roll off adjust the damper yeah so how scary is that when you're in third gear and it's lifting and you're like oh my god it is scary of course now you know at the time it's just yeah you just in you like just, fight pilot you mode. just deal yeah. with it it's like okay i need to deal with something like that um and like i said it was only like a little twitch but I want to deal with it before it gets bigger and it's harder to deal yeah, with. Yeah. So just, just dealt with it, just, you know. I think the worst thing anyone could do is probably just like massively throttle off. Yeah. All I did was like let off and then realised, what tried to look what was going on. And when it settled down, I tucked down a little bit and then put the power back on. And I think it was the headwind. Never ridden this in anger into a headwind before. All the wheelie guys are talking about, they're, oh my God, they're all over the place. Yeah. So, you know, it's happening to them, it's happening to me. Yeah. So, but it's still fun. Yeah. Let's go. We just gotta go hard. Uh, I go the hardest. I bring the pain. Not what she used to. It's all part of the game. Yeah, I just gotta go hard. Uh, I just gotta go hard. Go hard. Go hard. This 
maybe doesn't count for most of the degenerates watching our channel, but generally, the general population hasn't experienced going north of 100 miles an hour on a bike. That might not be true for our audience, to be fair. Um, <laughs> but what does it feel like going north of 115, 120 miles an hour on a scooter with 10 inch wheels? What does that actually feel like? Well, I've done, a, I've done over 100 miles an hour on a motorbike. Uh, you know, I had uh, an old Bandit 600 with a TCS 884 conversion on it. You know, and, and the wind was hitting me and stuff, and it was, it was exhilarating but I did it and then backed off yeah. you know, straight away. And all the street riders that I know said like, yeah, I've done 90 miles an hour on their scooter, which is great. Uh, you know, I'm sure they did it on private roads yeah, and yeah, stuff. Of course. I asked every single one of them, when you got to 90, what did you do? They said like, you know, then stopped, throttled off, calmed down everything, you know, slowed everything down. And it takes like, I don't know, like 25 seconds from the half mile to the mile, maybe even longer. And when you're fully pinned for that long, that's the bit that I would say isn't natural. Yeah. Um, I, I just literally keep it yeah, to just keep it pinned. I was under geared last time, got a bit more gearing this time, and I just kept it pinned. Uh, and I was literally, you know, focused on where's that finish line because I only want to keep it pinned until I need to. Yeah. There's no extra. Yeah, yeah. There's no showboating. No, yeah. it's just do the job. What happened? What do we need to do to either rectify some small issues or whatever? And that's it, really. But. Yeah, I would say um, it's really exciting, a little bit scary, but the bike was really set up quite well. We had like no wind or a tiny back, uh, back wind in, in, uh, in September when I did the UK, perfect conditions. I didn't have to deal with what we're dealing with today. That was a new experience for me. But again, I've learned quite a lot from it. Go hard. We simply wouldn't be able to visit events like Straight Liners Speed Week and make videos just like this one without the continued support of our awesome sponsors, 24MX. You can use our discount code MAX15 for 15% off a whole load of products on the 24MX website like custom seat covers, bike stands, fuel jugs and race tents just like the one that AD is using here today. As always, a massive thank you goes to 24MX for supporting what we do. So it's time for the second run of the day then. Can AD beat that 101 miles per hour that he set in the first run? And of course, we've got 125 as the main aim for the week. So let's see what he's made of. So it's a steady start again for AD. But it looks like he's trying to adjust his body position early and get tucked a little bit sooner on this run. Starting to build up speed earlier as well. 70 miles per hour heading up to 80 miles per hour now on the Vespa 10 inch wheels remember this is crazy stuff you can see the focus in AD's eyes we're creeping up now past 80 up to 90 miles per hour 95 miles per hour 100 miles per hour now on the Vespa 102 and a scary speed wobble for AD there and that is terrifying. Is there a problem with the bike maybe? There's a little shake of the head from AD there. He's getting refocused, getting backed into a tuck position, ramping up the speed. 103 miles an hour, already saw on the clock. And he's across the line then. A fast run for AD there. But was there a problem with the bike? The second run, um, it, was, it was feeling quite good and it just started to wobble a bit. So I backed off the power just to get it back under control and then put it back on again. Then I adjusted my body position and that seemed to smooth things out. So I think the headwind was, you know, unsettling, was hitting me and unsettling the bike. You know, we have to try these things, you know, maybe no records today, but, um, you know, it's all good for the days that we could get a record for. Yeah, we've got all week, right? We've got all week, yeah. <laughs> and you tell us about the little problem that you found here that might have put into play today unfortunately you know these uh, these machines are kind of highly strung um, and the exhaust cracked like naturally after the you know next to a, another repair so we're just looking into repairing that now um, but everybody in this paddock would help if they could um, there's some local firms that we know of um, there's one guy that's got a shop in York he can do it another guy just walked past and said like hey I can bring it back but I can bring it back Wednesday so we will be fixed and we will be running again but it was it was still a good day it was still a good day because we found some things out. We've tested some things. We wouldn't, you know, um, yeah. I, every I enjoyed day's a school day. Yeah, every day's a school day. Yeah, why not? Yeah, that's all. Yeah. So that might be the end of play today for AD, but they've got all week to get the bike fixed and get back on the runway. Whilst we had a moment here, I wanted to dive deep 
and ask AD exactly why he's decided to ride these scooters. Reaching these speeds on bikes with 10 inch wheels is truly scary stuff. So I just wanted to know why he does it. And obviously um, you're chasing that feeling, I guess the, that unnaturalness that you said, but there are definitely easier ways to do that than on a scooter. Why have you chosen a Vespa or a scooter to chase these records? Why these bikes? <laughs> I guess it's just like, you know, what, what avenues you go down as, you know, from a child, you, you know, motocross route or trials bike route. You know, I've ridden all those bikes, but it always came back to the scooters. I've only been into Vespas, like, say, maybe five years now. Lambrette is always up to them. I like them both. But it's safe to say, like, you're fully addicted to the scooters. That, that's your jam. Yeah, 100%, yeah, yeah. At the moment, um, it's Vespers, uh, who knows for the future, you know, because I, I see that the Lambrette boys are also having fun. What's the ultimate goal for you this week and into the future? What's the goal? Yeah, goal's one, the 130. The figure of 130 was basically born by um, Fabio and Alessandro from BFA. I told them my 122, they were very happy for me clearly. And before I could even check my phone, they're on their Instagram saying we're going to help him to get 130 over it. So they, it kind of was born by yeah, them. Yeah, like egging you on. But yeah. with the gearing that, you know, with the gearing being quite short and the length of track that we had, I was confident that, you know, with the similar conditions we had last time, that we could do it. Um, and I'm just going to keep working towards that. But 130 is the aim. That's it, 130. There you go. So AD was able to get his exhaust fixed and back to him by the Monday. But it was Wednesday when the speeds were going down. There were no wins at all, which is favourable but not optimal for speed records. Ideally, you want a tailwind. In 2022, with a tailwind, AD was able to log a two-run average speed of 121.6 miles per hour. And on Wednesday, with no tailwinds, AD's fastest speed was 123 miles per hour at the mile. He was actually able to log four runs in under an hour up to over 120 miles per hour, which shows the insane consistency of both AD and his machine. That gave AD an official two run average of 122 miles per hour. That beats his record from last year and is an official UK ITA world record. AD and his small team were able to learn a lot from their time at Speed Week and they'll be back in September to try and push this little Vespa over 130 miles per hour. Right, so there we have it. AD's done it. He's broken his own record on this thing, the world's fastest Vespa. Let me know in the comments down below if you'd be brave enough to take this thing onto the strip there and just send it. Let me know if you'd be brave enough to do that in the comments down below. As always guys, my name's Max. I wanna say a massive thank you to AD and everyone here at Straightliners for making us feel welcome. Remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed this video. Until next time, I'll see you at the track.